everybody and welcome back to the channel for the Great Guitar Builder 2023. So last year I entered the kit build category twice. So I built this here Tele-esque guitar with these Fishman Fluence P90s in it. Pretty cool. And for the second build I built this strap guitar. Now the telly, that was a full kit. This one was just the neck was pre-made and I made the body from scratch. Walnut top, ash body. And yeah, I absolutely love this guitar. It's my favorite guitar now. So this year, as you will have seen from the video title, I have entered into the scratch build category. This will be my first time ever making the neck and fretboard for a guitar. So yeah, that's quite a challenge. Since working on this strap last year, I have started using the Lincoln Maker Space. And that gives me access to lots more tools, including you know, the sort of traditional guitar building tools like a bandsaw and a pillar drill that I just don't have access to here. I mean, if you saw my videos last year, I did most of the work in the garden. Um, but as well as those sorts of tools, I also have access at the Makerspace to several 3D printers. We've got a laser cutter that is about 1200 by 1000, something like that, the bed. So easily big enough for doing guitar templates and stuff like that. And we also have a CNC machine. It's a little bit smaller, I think it's 900 by 600. On this particular build, I don't think I'll be using 3D printers. Uh, probably not the laser cutter either, but I will be making use of the CNC. It's very much a hybrid approach where it's gonna, it's gonna do some parts of the process for me, but I still have plenty more to do manually. Um, so as an example of that, what I've done is I've made a test of a partial fret pick. This was literally just a test to make sure the whole process was working as I hoped. And so far the CNC part has been flawless. It's worked beautifully on me. And yeah, that test really highlights what I was saying, that it's a hybrid approach. So in that particular case, the CNC has thickness to the piece of wood. It has uh, scored a line where the fret slots are. It has pocketed out for the fret marker. And it has also cut out the profile shape. But from there, I need to fill those fret markers epoxy, I need to cut the slots to full depth, I need to radiate it, and then of course hammering frets and whatnot at some point as well. And it's a similar process with other parts of the guitar as well where it's not it's not complete when it comes off the CNC by any means. Another thing to quickly mention with Makerspace is that it's more tricky to film there. So I will be able to get little clips of like the CNC running or some photos of my work and whatnot, but obviously it's a shared workshop. There's other people there. I can't really film fully in the same way I would do here. But fortunately, um, Crimson have changed the rules this year, so the video requirements are much less severe. So I think given both of those reasons, my video series this year is going to be somewhat different. Probably going to have some photo montages and things like that in there. So I guess the next thing to talk about is what I'm actually going to make this year. Now this year it's actually going to take a similar idea from this strap. So this is obviously recognised strap. 
but as you look a bit more closely, you can start to see quite a lot of things that have changed about this rep working well. And I really like this process of taking a production guitar and getting rid of the stuff that I don't like and keeping what I do like. And I'm going to take the same sort of approach with another production guitar. It's not going to be a strap. So for this build, it's actually going to be the Yamaha Revstar, which is one of the only production guitars in the last few years that have even remotely tempted me to consider going and buy one. So several models come with a sort of pinstripe or a racing stripe sort of finish. Now on these Revstars, that is mostly a painted, solid paint sort of finish, which is something I don't like. So <laughs> So that's quite interesting, I was thinking about how I could incorporate that kind of motif without going down the paint route. So this is the final design, and as I was just talking about with the stripe, my solution to avoid using paints to form that was to make a multi-laminate top that has a piece of contrasting material between the book match to form that stripe and this was actually inspired by the cavity cover plate on the rear of the Strat which I did the same thing essentially and it turned out beautifully on there so yeah I'm really looking forward to doing that I think it's going to look really cool for this build the materials for this top will be a book match set of quilted maple either side of a strip of sapili the reason that I've chosen these two materials is firstly that I wanted a significant contrast between the stripe and the material either side, but secondly a major goal for me with doing a scratch build was to make sure that the materials in both the body of the guitar and the neck worked well together and better than I could achieve when I'm using a kit neck where I don't necessarily have control over the materials. So on that note, the main body of the guitar will be made out of this piece of Sapili, which matches nicely to the stripe and contrasts nicely with the quilted maple, which you can see here. This is the neck blank, which is also a piece of Sapili. The jig you see here is how I'm mounting it in the CNC in order to route out the truss rod and the basic shape. The other major thing to mention is that the pickups are the Fisherman Fluence Greg Cox Signature Edition P90s. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm going to take those out of the telly that I showed you earlier. So for my Revstar inspired build, I have designed it around those pickups. And I think they're going to be much better in this guitar than they ever were in that telly. And eventually I'll go back to the telly and restore it to something closer to what I originally wanted from it. So this is my 3D CAD model. This is in Rhino 3D, or Rhinoceros, which is my preferred CAD software. I use that for work and have done for 15 plus years, so I'm fairly efficient at using it by now. For the cam side of things, I'm using Fusion 360, which actually works rather well because it can read in the Rhino files directly, which is quite surprising considering it's Autodesk. So looking at the neck, we can see our spoke wheel truss rod on the end there. We've got a 9.5 inch radius on the fretboard, which is ebony. That's on order from Crimson, hasn't quite shown up yet. The fret markers are filled with white epoxy, which I got from House of Resin. We have 22 frets. 
That's Jeskar fret wire I've ordered from Crimson as well. And if we turn off the fretboard, you can see we've got our truss rod in there and two slots for the carbon fiber reinforcement. And looking at the headstock here, you can see it's a 3x3 arrangement inspired by the original Revstar, although slightly modified to give a slightly straighter string pull through the nut. And you can see here that I've left the end of the fretboard in a vertical plane cut down to where it meets the headstock. This is because if I wanted to route in the standard fender sort of swoop up, what you end up with is when you route the fretboard, you would end up going to nothing, which is not a great idea really. So I've decided to carve that after the fact. You can also see here that I haven't modelled in the neck calf. And the reason for this is that I'm going to do that by hand afterwards anyway, so there was no need to model it really at this stage. And one other thing I've been playing around with on the headstock is these engravings, which I could fill with epoxy or leave as they are. So this is the body. As you can see in the neck pocket here, I'm using ferrules for the to hold the neck on. I used these on a prototype build over the winter and found them to be far superior than using wood screws. In fact, on that same prototype build, I tested various methods of attaching the cavity cover plates. And I've ended up going with ferrules for those as well, because they're just so much nicer. And yeah, I didn't have a lot of success with magnets, so yeah. So if we look at the electronics cavity here, you can see that I've made sure it's plenty big enough to hold all of the um, Fishman gubbins here, like the battery pack and pots and whatnot. Speaking of the Fishman battery pack, you'll see on the inside of the plate I've recessed an area there as well as if we turn off the actual battery pack a second, there we go. You can see I've recessed around where that sits there. And this is because on the other side of that, you have the USB port on a extruded cylinder. And if I didn't recess it into the plate like that, there would be like a four mil gap to that, which I thought would look horrendous. So this seemed a far nicer solution overall. So looking at the body on its own, you can see some of the detail here. So you can see, for example, I've got my wiring routes in there. I've got these cavities for weight relief. And in terms of how this will be made, well, first of all, I need to thickness the blank down to accommodate the top. Once that's done, I will locate one of three templates I'll be making, such as these, on the top, on the centre line, and then I'll locate these locating pin holes and drill them through the blank. That way I can interchange any of my templates, top or bottom, and they're always going to be located in the same place. And with that I will sign off and see you next time.